There we go. Oh, nice one. That was very quick, too. Come here. That's a nice fish, too. There we go. Lick. Boy, that was. <laughs> he hit it right at the boat. He hit it right there, boy. Right at the boat. <laughs> I mean, right in his face. <laughs> That's a good fish. Ooh. Gotta get used to taking those off. Well, once you hook them in, it's got a good hook on it. He needs to eat more. Yeah. Son, go out back He's got out a there. big face and a skinny body. Yeah. <laughs> get All right, buddy. Get out there and go eat. Well, let's let you go. There you go. All right. Hey, folks. Glad May here with BassResource.com. And today, I want to talk about a situation that kind of plagues us all. And that is, as you've been fishing over the years, you have your favorite lures that work really well for you, but as time goes on, more and more lures are coming out that look really good. You get those and you find you, get, you have a lot of success with those. And then you get more and you get more and pretty soon you're running out of room on your tackle box and you start to push aside those ones you first started using, the ones you had a lot of success with in favor of newer lures that you're having success with as well. And pretty soon those lures tend to end up in your garage somewhere or in your closet and they may never see the light of day again. Well, that happened to me. <laughs> Such was the case with the Johnson Silver Minnow. Now, the Johnson Silver Minnow has been around for a century now. And it's a fish producer. It's one of the first lures that I used all the way into my teens and early 20s. Used it a lot and caught a lot of fish on it. And then, you know, as time went on, it began to fall out of favor and I stopped fishing it for quite a while until a few years ago I picked it back up and I started catching a lot of fish with it again. So it's not that these lures stop producing, it's just that we tend to grab the latest and greatest and fish those instead. So I want to reintroduce you to the Johnson Silver Minnow and give you some ideas on how to fish it. You know, I just did a quick look on YouTube and there's not very many videos out there about it and they don't go into a lot of in-depth information. So I'm going to give you a brain dump here of everything that I know about the Johnson Silver Minnow. And if there's any videos that are made after this, they probably got their ideas from this video. So this is the original. So I'm going to dive into it and give you guys the lowdown on, on this thing. First of all, this is the Johnson Silver Minnow. <laughs> That's what it looks like, right? It's just a hunk of metal. <laughs> it's like, really? Why would a fish hit that? Well. The same can be said about other lures too, like the spinnerbait and the Zara Spook. You know, they don't look like anything in nature, but yet they produce, they catch a lot of fish. You know, a spoon doesn't look like anything in nature, but it catches a lot of fish. So it's the action. That's what it is. The action it has that appeal that attracts fish that makes them want to bite. And such is the case with the Johnson Silver Minnow. What a Johnson Silver Minnow does when it goes through the water, it's got this wobbling side to side action. And it's pretty pronounced as it goes through the water. And that is a different look than you see with any other baits out there. And that's why it's so attractive to the fish. They, they're not used to seeing it, especially now. Not so many people throw this lure very, very much. So it's, uh, it, it's something new the fish just haven't seen. So let me walk you through this, this, uh, this lure, starting with the front. Now, the front here, as you can see, this line tie, I don't know if you can tell or not, but you notice that? It's off kilter. See that? It's not, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't know if you can see or not, but it's not straight. It's at an angle. Even when you look at it down here, it's not perfectly on um, center. Okay. When you see that, when you take it out of the pack, package, don't fix it. A lot of guys, a big mistake they make, grab a pair of pliers and try to fix it. It's not a manufacturing defect. That is what gives it that characteristic wobble side to side action. So don't mess with that. Leave it like that. That's what you need in order for it to do that. Now, let's move down this, this lure a little bit more. Here you've got this wire here. It's a, it's a weedless, well, that's how, this is what helps make it weedless. When you first get out of the package, by the way, it, that wire is down here. So what you want to do is you want to bend it up a little bit and get it at least in line with the hook. Mine's I've been using it a lot lately here. So it's gone down a little bit, but the, the higher up you get it, the more weedless it is. And when the fish bite it, it just, the weed 
the wire guard goes out of the way so it hooks the fish. So don't be afraid of getting this up here in line. That's what makes it weedless. And that's what makes this, this lure so appealing is you can throw it in thick cover. It's designed to be thrown in thick cover and thick weeds and vegetation. Doesn't mean it won't get weeds on it and that it won't get hung up, but it comes through a lot better than some other lures. So just make sure that that wire is lined up with the hook and that it's you know straight with the hook and everything and it won't get hung up as much. Now, talking about the hook, the way that they color these baits is they just dip it and it's, it's anodized, okay? So the whole thing is coated, including the hook point. So when you get it out of the package, don't just tie it on and start fishing because you got a dull hook on there. You have to sharpen the hook. It's easy to do. It just takes a few seconds. It's not much work at all. If you guys used to throw these way back in the day, you would you feel like you had to grind away at it for half an hour to get it to sharpen. But now the way they make them, it's really easy to sharpen. It just takes seconds. And I've got a video on how to sharpen hooks. Just sharpen it that way and you'll be good to go. All right, so let's get further back behind here. That's the back of the hook. Okay, wait, there's, not, there's nothing there. Well, actually, <laughs> this is where you put a trailer on here. Okay, there's two types of trailers you can put on here. One is a skirt. Not the, not the kind, like it's, it's a spinnerbait skirt if you, or jig skirt, but not the kind with the collars in the middle. You want the kind that the collars on one end. And all you do is you slide it over the hook and it just hangs on the back like that. And that's an excellent trailer, excellent attraction. It adds a little more appeal to it and the fish will attack it. Another kind of trailer, well, actually, let's talk about the trailer colors. Trailer colors should only be like white or chartreuse. That's it. You don't need to get too crazy. I know there's a bunch of different skirt colors out there, but white or chartreuse is all you're gonna need with this bait. It's very simple. The other kind of uh, trailer that you wanna use is a soft plastic of some sort. Not a big bulky, bulky soft plastic because that's going to kill the action. A, a thin, smaller plastic is what you want. Either like a four inch, five inch ribbon tail worm or what I like to do is use grubs. I'll just put a grub here on the back. And again, just white or white or chartreuse. And all you do just to rig that is just take the hook and put it right through the center of the grub like so, hanging on the back. And there you go. Okay, you're good to go. You're set. And that that little ribbon tail in the back, that action does a whole lot. Does a, does does a lot of action back there, and that's what uh, attracts the bass. So um, that's it. It's a simple little setup. Now, one thing about rigging. Rigging this is the best way to do it is with a snap, like I have here on the front. Just use a snap. Don't use a snap swivel, or don't use a leader with a swivel. Don't use a swivel at all. This bait, it has a real pronounced side-to-side -side action, and it's really easy to get it to roll and spin. And when you do that, bass aren't gonna bite it. So if you add a, a ball bearing swivel on there, it's just gonna increase its propensity to spin. So don't do that. You're just gonna hurt yourself by doing that. So just put a snap in front. The snap enables it to wobble the most and give it a lot of action. Now, if you're fishing it in some steeper, uh, thicker vegetation and it's getting you know, weeds clumped on and things like that, which will happen with a snap, you can tie directly to it, that's okay. It'll still wobble back and forth, just not as pronounced. But if I had a, a choice, I'd do the snap first, but it's not, it's, it's okay to tie directly to it as well. There you go. Wow. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Woohoo! We got one. That's a doorbell fish. We got one. I was not paying attention. <laughs> I guess it should have been. There you go. Smile for the camera. <laughs> Smile. All right. Camera, you. <laughs> uh. There we go. Johnson Silver Minnow, man. Look at that, he just took it right there. <laughs> right in his <the> face. <laughs> Gotta love it. Right at the roof of the mouth, too. Boy. One thing about the hooks on this thing.
on. Wow. There we go. All right. Let's let you go, little boy. And grow up and be a big man. There you go. <laughs> okay, buying this bait is really simple. They've, they've made this thing, you know, like I said, for a century, and they've kept it very, very simple. They only make it in three colors. It's, it's silver, gold, and black. Black is what you use when the water's really dingy or muddy, and you got real cloudy water, it's low visibility. Silver, you use that in ultra clear water, say greater visibility than eight feet deep, you know, six to eight feet deep. And then the gold is what you use in between, that stained color, anywhere in the water visibility is from like two to eight feet deep. That's what you use gold. So I don't have a lot of muddy water in my area, but I do have a lot of clear. So I use silver a lot, but I also use gold when the water gets a little dingy. As for sizes, again, they make it kind of weird to get the sizes. They, they number them, size one, two, three, and they, you know, and half sizes as well. You don't have to be concerned about all those different sizes. All you need to worry about is size two and two and a half, which is approximately a quarter ounce and a half ounce bait. Those are really the only two you're going to use the most. So just get those two in a couple of different colors and you're good to go. All right, so let's talk about rigging with the rod and reel. What kind you want to use here? I'm going to use a 15 pound fluorocarbon line. I like to use Seacar and Vizix line because you can throw that in anywhere. <laughs> okay, that, that line is castable, it's supple, you can cast long distance with it. Plus, it, it, you can throw it in all kinds of cover and it comes out without getting nicked and frayed. And so it's really durable and it's abrasion resistant. So that's what I use for line. The rod is a medium heavy seven foot rod with a fast action or a limber tip. That's what I like to do. It enables me to cast that thing out there a mile and bring it back without any problems. And I still got the leverage to get that fish out of heavy cover when you're fishing it in that thick cover. The reel is I want a slower gear ratio. I like to use a six three to one gear ratio, a six one to one gear ratio, sometimes slower than that. This lure again has a propensity to spin when you bring it back at faster speeds. So you bring it back a slower speed much slower and then maybe a slow rolling spinner bait almost it's you can't run it too fast without it spinning on you so a slower gear ratio will help you bring it back nice and slow now if you're throwing the silver minnow over muck you know over matted vegetation over weeds the real thick stuff then i'd heavy up and i go for like a, a 7.2 to a 7.6 heavy power fast action rod Sp spool that with 50 pound braid i like cigar cigar uh, smackdown braid and then I'd use a reel that's, you know, it doesn't have to be a fast speed reel here, just a 6.3 to 1, somewhere in there, with a real strong drag. That's what's really important. Something with more than 20 pounds of drag on here, because when the fish grabs it, they're going to dive back down that matted vegetation. And your job is to get his head up and get it pointed to you and keep him above the water as you, you know, scoot him across, really. And that long rod's going to give you that, le that leverage and that gear ratio is going to enable you to do that with that strong drag. You'll be able to get that fish out of that cover. Okay, places to fish this lure. It's really, this lure was originally designed to fish th those heavy, thick vegetation areas, especially in the summertime when the mats of vegetation, they mat over and it's really thick. That's when the Johnson Silver Minnow shines. You throw it on top of this mat and you just bring it across. You can either just do a straight retrieve, the bass underneath will detect something moving, they'll blow up on it as it comes through, the, uh, comes through it. Or what I like to do is I like to bring it through and I like to tap, tap, tap a little bit just to let it slap on the surface. In that way, the bass have a little bit more vibration to key on. Bring it across where you can, there's an opening in that, in that vegetation. There's a little hole or something like that and just let it fall. Just drop it down in there. It'll just flutter and wobble as it falls in there. If a bass has been tracking it, he'll smash it. And also expect when you get towards the edge of vegetation, when you bring it across those mats, when you get right to the edge, expect a strike because that's a lot of times when they happen. And man, it could scare you, <laughs> but get ready for it. Just don't set the hook right away when you see the explosion. Wait until you feel the fish tugging on your line and then set the hook and you'll catch more that way instead of pulling the lure away from them. Another way to fish this lure is submergent, underwater. This is what I like to do the most and I like to fish it through and around flooded bushes and trees and through thicker grass and reeds, through lily pads. Just let it, you know, nice and slow, wobbling it through all that. And just like you kind of would a spinnerbait, but this time you're using the spoon, 
and you'd be surprised how many fish you catch doing it that way. You don't really have to do anything special with it, just a slow, steady wind, bringing it through that cover, and hang on because you can get a strike at any time. So that's everything about the Johnson Silver Minnow. I sure hope it helps you a lot. These aren't very expensive lures. They're fun to throw and easy to use, and I hope you catch a lot of fish with them. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com. Oh,